In this episode of Oh Jeezy Fitty Feezy, <laughs> we are talking all about downtown Disney. A lot of news dropped today on Portos and a lot of the other eateries and venues coming to the reimagined downtown Disney. We're going to talk about it. We're going to break it down up next on Oh G Fitty. Oh. Welcome aboard, everybody, to another episode of OG55. We're talking all about those downtown Disney announcements that dropped today or maybe yesterday, depending on when you are watching this video. But the Italiano, welcome back on the show. How are you doing today, sir? Doing good. Always a great time uh, talking shop with you, whether we're talking the Disney studios, the parks, uh, corporate CEO stuff, or... Uh, talking music or uh food you know whatever we're talking about it's always a good time on uh orange grove 55. absolutely where can everybody find you on social media sir absolutely you can find me on x formerly known as twitter at disney george you could also find me on instagram threads and blue sky under the disney italiano and of course you can find me right here on my home base at orange grove 55 with citrus corner with all that sweet juicy but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. There we go. All right. The legendary, the one, the only Mr. Scott Gustin, a uh, friend of the channel, is reporting. Now, these are one of many stories that were dropped today for Downtown Disney. Now, this is Portos. Now, remember, we were hearing from fans, George, that this thing was canceled. Remember? It was done. They, it, it was done. done. No, no. You know, we, did, we didn't hear about it for a few months. Therefore, it must be canceled. No, it's not canceled. Um, it's actually moving forward in a very, very big way. It says here, here's a first look at Portos Bakery and Cafe, which I've never seen a Portos with a cafe. That's interesting. Coming to downtown Disney, Disney says this will be the first Portos location with sit-down table service and a full bar. Okay, so this is, this is what it's going to look like. Now, this is interesting, right? So it's taking up everything from from the basically from the end of like basically right before the esplanade right it's taking it's taking over everything from there all the way basically to the very end right before world of disney so that's interesting i mean because before this was um well i don't even know what these are now what this was earl's for a while at one point it was also la brea bakery right so but then was there was this? like a big gap between earl of sandwich to world of disney now they're basically filling in that gap with the entire structure of the building is what it looks like. So there was nothing in between. As far as building structure goes, no, I don't believe so. Like, okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, I got I to gotta look at Here's the old. The I think that what they're doing is they're even, Earl's was kind of like the in-between, like of World of Disney and the Esplanade. I think they're maybe even stretching out a little bit further to the left adding from a little bit of like that empty spot of the esplanade if you will probably gotcha 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 yeah because this thing looks massive and it looks great i mean i think it looks really really good it's kind of a mid-century kind of vibe very minimalist as well this is kind of cool in here um, i think this is probably someone like maybe the portos family on the wall i mean this looks great man i mean i never would have guessed portos would have a location like this they're gonna make bank here I mean, this looks like the Epic Universe Hotel. <laughs> it's, 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 the Helios. I mean, this is nuts in here. I can't even believe it. This is that Porto's money, George. You know what I'm saying? I'm telling you, this is Porto's money right here. But yeah, this thing is going to make bank. I mean, every location they have out here, the one in Burbank does crazy business. They opened one over here uh, by me um, about a year or so ago. It's And it's a massive one like this. Not Maybe not quite as big as this, but it's massive as well. There's always cars around the block for this thing. This is going to change the game for downtown Disney. Mm -hmm. This is going to absolutely change the game. It's like putting it's like putting an in and out in downtown Disney. I mean, that that's pretty much what you're doing here with Portos. It's the in and out of bakeries. Anytime they build one of these, it's a it's a freaking gold mine. Now you have now you're not from California. You haven't had one of these yet, George, or or you have? No, I have not. But I've heard a lot of 
from California locals. Like this is like the, the grand slam when it comes to bakeries, but really quick, I do have to ask a question when you said this is like an in and out of bakery. So that means it's basically in and out of to get cake. Oh yeah. You got, you got to get that cake boy. You know what I'm saying? That cake. cake. There it is. Yeah. We love cake. We're cake people here on OG 55. You know, we love our cake, but yeah, this is going to be, fa- this is, this is going to be a really big hit for downtown Disney. This is a sm- one of the smartest moves they've ever made. You know what I'm saying? This is gonna be amazing. So I don't know. I'm excited for you to try it, George. I am very curious to try it. I would I, I'm I can't wait to try it for myself. But now does it um obviously it's gonna be very popular, so it's gonna gonna get massive lines. Are they do they kind of do like a queuing system like where you take a number and they'll call you when it's ready yeah i don't know how it's gonna work for downtown disney but i do know there is a system um a, a system like that for the one in burbank because i don't live too far from burbank i'm 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 um you know maybe 10 minutes 15 minutes from burbank so yeah you you can you can pre-order and then you wait in like this like car queue in your car and then they bring it to your car so obviously they can't do that same system here at downtown disney with the car with like pulling up and all that it's a different it's a different setup but i'm sure they'll they'll have some kind of queuing thing that they'll implement here the demand is so high for these places they're going to have to do something you know yeah um and then maybe part of it too is that you know they have a lot of loungy looking areas maybe that's also for that purpose to kind of get people in here lounging and waiting for their order uh, i you know it's a possibility i'm not really sure but i mean it looks really really good bro I mean, this is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. So, and this thing is going to be here forever. I mean, these, I'm telling you, these portos, they just, they're money makers. It's not going anywhere, but, um, any final thoughts before we move on to our next downtown Disney update? Just that I'm, uh, I'm very excited to try it for myself. And I knew that this was going to end up, you know, showing up when they, when an actual legit news outlet says that they are building one in downtown Disney. And people are saying, okay, well, yeah, we, we haven't heard anything, you know, as of late. So they're probably not going to do it or it's going to get delayed. It's like these businesses and they're not going to tell you every single thing, every step of the way. It's just like, you'll find out when they want you to find out. I know. I know the fans love to kind of run with stuff and kind of the, their imagination fills in the gaps. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I don't know this and I don't know that. So my imagination will, will fill all that in, you know, and it's like, I, no, I, I know there, there, it, it took forever for portos to kind of get started, but there was no indication that this thing was not going to get built. ABC seven, which is owned by the Walt Disney company said just like six months ago, or maybe even more than that, that portos is coming to downtown Disney and it will be open in 18 months at that time. Okay. This thing was never canceled. I don't know where that rumor came up from, from, from fans it's kind of ridiculous but you know at the end of the day it's all good it, it is coming and uh it's a great addition to the downtown disney district but mr augustin continues with the news drop says here disneyland announces arthur and son's steak and bourbon god you, you can't get more alpha than that bro <laughs> fucking steak and bourbon you know what i'm saying dude a little chest hair you know and and pearl's roadside <laughs> <laughs> and Pearl's Roadside Barbecue Restaurants will be coming to downtown Disney District on the footprint of the former Tortilla Joe's. That's interesting. Both concepts are from Michelin starred chef Joe Isidori. <coughs> I do apologize for the cough, everybody. But uh, yeah, so this is going where Tortilla Joe's used to be. This is actually, I'm really excited for this one. This one sounds interesting. Steak and bourbon. I like that, dude. I like that a lot. What are your thoughts on this, this concept, the food, what they're going to offer, you know, a man's man meal, right? You know, George and, yeah, and, the, look look, of the, and the look of the building and everything. Yeah. I, I, I do love the the look of it. It kind of gives off, um, dare I say, and I could be wrong cause I've never been to this location yet, but it kind of gives like a, like an art deco kind of Beverly Hill style structure of a building. Oh yeah. I can see that Melrose. Um, yeah, my my um one of my one of my doctors is over there in in Bev Hills, <laughs> and, and there's actually like going down um going down in that general area. There's a lot of like uh, 
uh, you know, like the typical like luxury Beverly Hills kind of shops and stuff like Chanel and all that crap. Um, <laughs> you know, you know, all that stuff. I don't care about any of it, but you know, right. Um, you're right though, George. There's a lot of there's a lot of architecture and kind of uh, building designs that kind of look like this. So you no, you're absolutely right. And you've never been to Beverly Hills, but you knew that. That's wild. Yeah, yeah. I, I follow it a lot, but I've always wanted to uh, um, kind of go down Beverly Hills because when I do, I got like two songs that are like in my head for it, and that's the Axel Foley theme from Beverly Hills Cop, um, and uh, Pretty Woman from Pretty Woman. So oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm telling you, Pretty Woman, that was a good movie. That was a real good movie. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this looks pretty cool. I mean, steak and bourbon. I, I don't know. I think it's a cool, it's a cool kind of like masculine energy, I, I think. Right. But I'm yeah, down. It, it gives like a, a masculine kind of um, like menu or something like, obviously it, it'll be for everybody, but I love right. how they kind of theme it to it's like, as you said, like a man's man kind of place i mean what's more man than a steak and a bourbon like come on come on you know what i'm saying so I, i'm curious about this one for sure and then we got bbq pearls roadside bbq um this is very 1950s at least from this i was just picture. gonna say it screams like vintage 1950s yeah everything down from the architecture to the fake grass it's mid-century to the max um so this is this is a barbecue joint i mean I'm always down for some good barbecue. Um, interesting architecture. I don't know. I'm, I'm curious, you know? I mean, really, at the end of the day, with all these additions, they all look great. Like, the aesthetics, the buildings, all they all look fantastic. They all sound good, too, right? The food. <laughs> Until you get in there and you really eat and you really try the stuff, you really don't know. But as far as what we're seeing and what we're hearing, you know, I mean, I got to be honest with you, though. I, I love barbecue. I really do. But I would probably try this one before for the barbecue place get some good steak and everything i don't know i'm just more of a steak guy than like a like a barbecue like pulled pork guy you know what i'm saying so yeah everyone has a different you know um kind of flavor but what what, what would you what are you gonna try you know, are you gonna try this one first or are you gonna do the bar i think if it was like now when they say like when they define like barbecue if it was like ribs or like korean barbecue um I don't think I it'll be Korean barbecue. No, I, I, wish it, I wish it. I wish it was. I wish they would put a Korean barbecue place at Downtown Disney. Yeah, based off of like the the, the architecture and how it's like the 1950s, I don't see that either. I think it's going to be like a traditional barbecue place. Um, I'm I'm right there with you. I'm not a big pulled pork kind of guy. That's why when I saw the menu for um, the um, country bar. The the country bar, yeah, country bar, <laughs> country bar. <laughs> um, it didn't really strike my fancy, to be honest with you. I'm for sure the food is still good, yeah. but it's just not my kind of barbecue, so to speak. But I'm always a I'm a steak guy. I you, know, you give me a good steak, uh, prime rib, porterhouse, like oh my gosh, like I'll go to town. Yeah, go to town, go to town, go to town, like a Pennsylvanian. Go to town, in downtown Disney. <laughs> downtown i love it i love it so mr gustin here says disney also says the wonderful world of suites and parkside markets will open this winter so this was the former marceline um confectionery which i, I gotta say i really loved marceline um i would always stop by there my mom would always love to get a, a candy apple so i would if i go to the park i would try to get her one <clears throat> when i would go um this this new version of Marceline uh, looks very honestly. You know what it looks like to me. What? It looks like something that you would find like at uh, Tokyo. Oh, with the cutesy little kawaii. The cutesy little yeah. Yeah, I, I and see. Just the color scheme. Totally yeah, and it just feels more mainstream to me. Like the Marceline thing was great for us disney nerds because we as nerds know the connection from marceline and walt disney you know it was his hometown right his boy his boyhood boyhood home was marceline missouri so it was always kind of a cool thing i thought but like i understand why disney went this route this is a much more normie driven sort of approach to this candy store candy mm -hmm. store the wonderful world of sweets like you said it's very kind of very japanese inside with the cutesy little faces and everything it's gonna do well. I mean, it's candy. You can't really go wrong with it, um, and it's huge. And then we got Parkside Market, which I do believe they do. You mentioned Korean. I do believe they have a Korean 
uh, eatery in here. I don't know if it's Korean barbecue though, but um, I believe there is a Korean a spot in here, if I'm not mistaken. At least that was what announced. Is, what is this replacing? This is not replacing anything. This is in that new area. Well, I mean, technically, I think this is where the AMC used to be. This is like, uh, I think, right next to that new stage and where we had the OT55 meetup. It's in that uh, same general vicinity. But again, very mid century, very appropriate for Disneyland Resort because our resort was birthed in the mid century. I don't really have any complaints or really anything to add on it. Uh, other than that, we're getting a lot more places to eat. You can drink if you drink. I don't drink anymore, but you can drink, do your thing. I don't know. I, this looks cool. What do you think? This, yeah, like everything compiled together, it kind of reminds me when they started transitioning Walt Disney World's Danton Disney into Disney Springs. And this, this kind of change, like that's going mid-century, but yet moving into the future, so to speak, that's more relevant with the color scheme and the building structures and what have you it, it's almost kind of turning into like a little mini disney springs so to speak but i like that that's not a bad thing no um especially because we've talked about it many times on the channel when a lot of people are saying you know the toy story parking lot is going to be like a disney springs-esque area and it's like okay well why are they doing all these renovations? Why are they putting money into Danton Disney than to just add even more new stuff over at a 75 acre parking lot? It just doesn't make any sense to me. I know. No, that Toy Story lot's going to be a third park eventually. They're not going to make that a mall. Okay. Yeah. And then I know I hear all the talk about, well, you know, OG, I mean, it won't just be a mall, it'll be a hotel too. You're not going to get you can't justify another hotel if you don't build another park exactly so it, it's, it's an epic universe yeah the epic universe that universal did the right thing that they, they built a, a hotel with the park yeah that makes sense but what what would happen if they would have just built a mall over there <laughs> you know it doesn't make any sense so yeah the, it's going to be a toy story will be a, a park and it will probably also have a hotel component to it so they'll get the best of both worlds you know but um but this is crazy it, this um, this this oh, oh go ahead oh sorry <laughs> we sound like a broken record really quick too i just want to just add in too and down the road eventually i feel like disney will uh purchase garden walk which again is another outdoor kind of mall kind of thing too so what they're going to have three three downtown disney's yeah like, come on it's not gonna happen yeah that, that's gonna be a the toy store lot to be a park absolutely this so is sorry, this is no, you're good. You're good. Th this little bar area over here at the uh, at the park side market looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. Again, I'm getting Helios vibes. I don't know why, like from that Universal Hotel. It just kind of has that vibe. A lot of these places do on the inside. But um, yeah, I mean, again, it looks good. I mean, this is a huge improvement, I think, to what we were ha what we had at Downtown Disney before and a much smarter use of space, too. You had that gigantic AMC theater taking up so much room. You're replacing that one theater now with so many different restaurants and eateries and, and, and merchandise shops. I mean, entertainment even. I mean, it's crazy the amount of I, – I hate to use this word because it feels very corporate in a lot of ways, but how much value they were able to suck out of that, that AMC lot, plot of land – like how much they could get out of that. They turned one vendor into like 12 or whatever it is, you know, it's crazy. So it's good for Disney because you get more people paying you to, to, to utilize that space. But it's also good for the consumer and the guests like us because we have more options now. You know, well, and especially, I know especially since there was and still is a movie theater in Garden Walk. Right. And so to have another movie theater that's just like blocks away, it's like. I'm for sure they did, you know, they, they made revenue, but it's like, you're right. They utilized that space. Well, they utilized it very, very well. Yeah, absolutely. So this is good. This is exciting. Um, again, I mean, they're making all the right moves. I think at downtown Disney with this whole remodel, uh, Mr. Gustin here says, uh, Avengers reserve and the D and the D lander shop at downtown Disney district will open on December 6th. So this is pretty, pretty soon. This is opening. Um, I mean, you know, pretty standard looking kind of Avengers shop. You got Captain Marvel here, all the, 
all the artwork or the you know posters or whatever on the um on the wall you got some cool like a little effects here with the lighting i don't it looks pretty cool to me i mean nothing nothing too crazy it kind of gives a little bit of like world of disney vibes a little bit for me um which is not bad and then this is the d lander shop which is uh it looks like there's some like some of the dresses, kind of vintagey kind of style, right? Yeah. Which your our friend Mindy would love. I think Min Mindy's gonna like live in here. Yeah, she'll be she'll be she'll be shopping around in there for sure. With all the hats and stuff, bro, like the 1950s stuff. Yeah, dude, she she'll be here, absolutely. But yeah, this looks fun. I mean, this looks cool. Again, there's not much to add to that. I mean, you know, I it just the, this is a, a big improvement, I think, from just having that movie theater sitting there. It really didn't make a whole lot of sense for me to have a theater. I don't know. When I go to Disney, and I guess it's for the locals, I guess. I don't know. But when I when I think of Disneyland Resort, why am I going to spend two hours in a movie theater? You're at Disneyland. Go do something. You know? <laughs> like, it, like, come on. You know what I'm saying? It's it, I kind of felt the same way with the Starcade, the arcade over in Tomorrowland. I've always felt that. Like, you're at Disneyland and you're going to play arcade games that you could play at your local arcade? That is true. I mean, back in the day, I'm dating myself, even knowing what an arcade is, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's like, you know, uh, hey, I love him. You know, my, my buddy Sean, right? I talk about him all the time. Great guy. But, man, he would do that. We'd go to Disney, dude, when we were, when we were kids. He'd go to Disney and we would spend like two hours in the Starcade. I'm like, bro, you can do this at home. You know what I'm saying? Yep. But anyway, I, that's how I felt about the movie theater at Downtown Disney. It just, it just didn't feel right. At least the stuff that they're adding now is a little bit more special, like the vendor stuff and all that. It's not just the standard movie experience. You can kind of do other things. So I think it's a good fit. But um, yeah, I don't know. Any, any closing thoughts, uh, Mr. Italiano? I think for me, um, yeah, they're like, okay. I mean, it's, they're, they're great new additions. I mean, it's not necessarily like my cup of tea, but I mean, I'll definitely check it out for sure to see like, uh, you know, especially the Marvel shop. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's cool. Little options. I'm more excited. Mostly. I don't really care. So much. yeah, the Marvel shop's cool, but I think for me, mostly it's just the eateries kind of getting in there and, and trying the steakhouse and the various different food locations. I think, I think that's going to be exciting because yeah. I mean, to be honest with you, the in-park food is kind of, it's okay. DCA is better than Disneyland. I will say that. Yes. But to have some really good food options, I know you and Abby uh, did the uh, Din Tai Fung recently. We did. That was my first time ever eating at a Din Tai Fung. And you had, you had a, you had a, <laughs> we're going to get into this in a chit chat video, but you had an experience where it was a little bit of a, culture shock says so just a little bit yes so yeah so anyone who wants to uh know about that story definitely check out our chit chat video that'll be coming out soon for uh for members only so if you want to check that out definitely think about becoming a member of orange grove 55. yeah you should because it's a funny story about how a pennsylvanian just just hanging out in in california it's fantastic it's <laughs> absolutely fantastic well, well but chit chat video coming very soon so Make sure to tune in for that. Okay, so our final story of the day is this. Okay, so this is the 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 the, the Madame Leota gift shop that they were building um, in between Haunted Mansion and Tiana's, which I recently went on Tiana's with uh, with our friend, you know, Theme Park Wizard, right? Mm -hmm. Shout out to Mr. Wizard and also from the channel Jay Lynn, his family. I met his mom and his dad and his brother amazing family i made if you hey, if you if you guys are watching we're definitely going to hang out again i love spending time with you guys but here's the thing with this right i was very critical of this building going up when it was a steel structure it looked like a just a gigantic sort of eyesore and mm -hmm. i i get it it wasn't finished yet you know what i'm saying honestly now that it's done it doesn't look as big and oversized as it did before and it feels like it fits in a little more. Um, it does bring the, the the mountain down, like Tiana's down, like the 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 uh, the forest perspective, so to speak, right? And I think that's the goal. They were trying to make Tiana's look like less of a mountain because they don't have mountains over there in that part of the, in that part of the country, right? right? So I think that was part of the goal with this gift shop was to sort of build it and place it in a certain way where it's not as much of a mountain. You, you visually, you brought it down, right? Mm -hmm. they did that job but i don't feel like it's as much of an of an eyesore and as much of a 
just plopped here kind of vibe that I did feel when they were building it. And honestly, they weren't done yet. So, you know, just being a nerdy schmuck when I was judging it before it was done, but it just didn't look right. Now that it's done, it does look pretty good. And I don't have much, as much of an issue for it, but what say you Italiano? Are you still not on board with this thing? Or are you feeling it? So here's the thing with me. I'm kind of like mixed right now before I, I was I, like, I was with you. Like I was like, Oh my gosh, this thing is going to look, horrible it's gonna look clunky it's gonna look like it's in the way and everything it doesn't look as big as yeah you're right as it looked like when they were still constructing it it also looks like there's more sidewalk than what we thought was gonna be because it looks like it, it kind of is like pushed back a little bit right so it almost looks like where they had the walls they were still building on more sidewalk that makes it look like it's pushed back further i do like the color scheme i love this style of the the gift shop it fits um the mansion quite well kind of like down in that uh down in like um uh kind of like plantation like southern you know mansion kind of esque feel to it which is you know which is really cool the only thing for me is it does feel a little bit just like it's plopped there like I, I feel like like when you look at it like right now in this you see Tiana's to the right you see the mansion and then you just see this building small little building here and it's like I feel like that they could have intertwined it maybe somewhere like along the lines of the mansion itself so it seems like it's like connected to the mansion but without it being connected it, yeah it needs it needs like like it's some iron railing, like an iron iron fence around it or something, mm -hmm. or maybe some trees around it, like yeah. some small trees or just something to kind of make it look a little bit more like it's been there. You're right. I can see it. it like it's a structure. It's just sitting there in between these two things in between these two attractions and it doesn't really have anything around it. It's just sitting there on like this brick, brick and pavement, you know? Um, it just needs something that kind of mix it up a little bit, like whether it's like a little rock wall or brick wall or like some trees or even some bushes or something. I don't know. You're right. It feels unnatural is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. It's just like, it's just like plop there. It's like you have, if, if I was using like us as a, like a description, it's like you have you and me on both sides to represent Tiana's and the mansion. And then boom, you have Ebba. <laughs> Michael Eva, there he is. He's right there. Shout out to Mister Mister Eva. We love him. He's our little bro. Oh, dude, we love Eva, dude. We had we had a fantastic live show with Eva last night. I'm telling you, yes. if you haven't checked out the latest live show, You're check it out. We, oh, we were cracking up. We were we were talking about all kinds of stuff. You wouldn't even believe it. You wouldn't even believe it. When we do the live shows, everybody at home, literally, you can ask us anything. One one of the live shows we were talking about Brazilian nuts and breast milk. I'm not even kidding you. It a wild conversation. This last one we're talking about what like booty, I think, right? But butts? booty, yeah. I mean that's a normal conversation. That's a normal video for OG55, yeah. but you know. But it was fun. A great time. We do have a really really good time. So check out the live shows for sure. And members get exclusive members only uh, live shows. So yes. so check that out. But uh, yeah, really good stuff. I think overall the updates here at Disneyland and the, and downtown Disney have been really exciting i mean i don't see too much negative here the haunted mansion thing i agree with you george I, I think it needs a little something in and around it to sort of kind of bring it into the area a little better but did it did turn out better than i was expecting better than i was anticipating it just looked massive when it was just a steel structure yeah and uh with all the uh side paneling and the roofing and the theming and stuff it's kind of brought it in a little yeah. bit so as i said it looks great i think the color scheme the structure looks fine i think you're right i think they need like a a gate or like a like a fence kind of thing like surrounding it yeah maybe put up some like shrubbery or something kind of like let it blend into the mount uh to excuse me to the uh the mansion itself without it actually being connected to it exactly exactly so really cool stuff everybody at home i'd like you to you know, comment down below. We'd love to hear from you in regards to downtown Disney. Um, you know, this, uh, Madam Leota shop, uh, but George, let's close it out. Where can everybody find you on social media, sir? Absolutely. You can find me on X formerly known as Twitter at Disney George. You could also find me on Instagram threads and blue sky under the Disney Italiano 
And of course, you can find me right here on my home base at Orange Grove 55 with Citrus Corner with all that sweet, juicy, but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. Sticky. We haven't done a sticky drop in forever. Here we go. Dude. We'll be seeing them soon, bro. We'll be seeing them soon, dude. I'm telling you, man, it's uh, it's going to be fascinating. It's a smaller venue that we're seeing them in. It's going to be House of Blues. So it's not like this big stadium. It's not like, you know, like Dodger Stadium or something. So, man, if we get to, like, meet them or, like, just they come into the crowd and, like, they we can get a selfie with them, I will die. I will die. We'll see. We'll see. But, uh, Italiano, where can everybody at home find you on social media, sir? I already did that, bro. Oh, okay. Well, we're, then we're, <laughs> we're closing up. Thank you so much for watching this episode of OG55. And until the next time, see you later. Thank you for watching OG55. If you aren't already, consider becoming a member today.